Hi, I'm David Benz with Hedgeye's Gaming Lodging Leader Team. We're here to talk about our negative thesis on the Macau Gaming Operators. We've had a three-pronged negative thesis on the group. The first leg of our negative thesis included a slowdown in the VIP channel due to a crackdown on corruption. The second leg of the thesis down was expressed in June when we saw a deceleration in the mass segment. And finally, three, we believe that there's the risk of increased margin contraction for the mass segment. Joining me on the telephone is Todd Jordan, Hedgeye's Managing Director of Gaming, Lodging, and Leisure. Todd, you've been in the market for two days. Tell me, what are your observations, what are you seeing, and what have you learned from your meetings? Yeah, thanks, David. Uh, we, uh, you know, I, I came out here, uh, obviously, we've been negative for, for most of the year, and um, believe it or not, I'm, I'm actually a little bit more negative uh, after a couple days of meetings here. Uh, you know, we've been focused on the likely margin erosion uh, in the, the most profitable part of this business, which is the, uh, the mass business. And I still think that's, uh, that's going to happen. But, you know, the other two aspects of our uh, short call, which you pointed out, the VIP uh, business going negative and mass decelerating certainly has happened. Um, but I do think there's a uh, likelihood for a, another downturn in revenues to go along with uh, the margin erosion. erosion. So certainly, uh, certainly even more negative than, than I thought. And I think most of the, my contacts and the people we met with out here uh, were also more negative than, than I expected. So if we were to take a step back in Macau, there are two gaming segments or two types of gamblers. That is the mass or the VIP. Uh, a mass player, someone who bets typically maybe 300 Hong Kong to 2,000 Hong Kong dollars a, a hand, while a VIP may bet 500,000 to maybe a million per hand. And uh, typically the VIP player is uh, in a private room and are sponsored by a junket or a host. So with that said, the margins on the mass segment are something around 20%, while VIP margins are something near 3%. Um, what is our outlook for the mass segment on a year-over-year -year growth basis? Yeah, sure. And just to, just to add a little color to your margin commentary, um, that's kind of overall margins. But if you look at the incremental margin, which is, is what we're really focused on, because uh, you know, with revenue so volatile, if, if you see a sharp downturn, you know, the margins on the incremental dollar of mass spend is more like 30% uh, and maybe even a little bit higher. And, and with VIP, it's about 15%. So what we're seeing um, out here is that you know the, the VIP issues have been well documented. You have a, a nationwide clampdown on corruption, which is keeping people away from uh, Macau. People don't want to be seen spending money. Um, it's it's not uh, it's not in fashion right now um, to do that. Uh, that and some liquidity issues with the junkets. Junkets provide credit to the VIP players and. Uh, you know, with the economic slowdown in China and some other issues, there's not as much uh, liquidity to be lended out to uh, some of these players. Um, on the mass side, you've seen, uh, I, I think the, the, the deceleration has absolutely been sharp, David, and, and, and you mentioned uh, that we were lapping the, uh, the raise in the average minimum bets last year, substantial raise in, in July of last year, which created very difficult comps, but it's going deeper than that. I think the corruption issue is also affecting the premium mass business because those people also don't want to be seen as ostentatious. Uh, and the premium mass would be those really, really high betting mass individuals that are betting you know, pretty much as, as much as, as a lot of the VIP guys are betting. Um, and I think the mass business, you know, it's been our four. You can see our forecast. I think we might have a slide in there on, on our forecast for mass. But, you know, we've had uh, really the street, I think, was still projecting kind of north of 30 percent mass growth. And, and we were more in the mid-teens, and it looks like it's going to be even less than that. And we're probably going to hit single digits here in August, uh, October and December uh, on year-over-year -year mass growth. So we definitely need a reset of expectations. Um, I, I think, you know, the consensus from out here is probably mass can get up to that 10 to 15 percent growth with uh, new properties coming online, driving a little bit of demand growth uh, over the next few years. And I think that's okay. It's just that there still needs to be this reset, uh, not only with sentiment, which we've started to see, but also with the uh, the earnings estimates out there. And you know, we remain well below uh, the street on earnings for uh, not only Q3 and Q4, but also 2015. Even though the estimates have come down from the street, and I think that's uh, mostly concentrated in our differentiated view on mass that we think uh, not only will growth be slower next year than maybe most people, but also we'll have some margin erosion uh, that's not really being factored in by the street yet. Another important topic uh, was the implementation of the smoking ban uh, earlier this week on Monday, Todd. What did you learn about uh, the implementation of that smoking ban during your meetings? 
Yeah, sure. So uh, just a, a refresher, they, a couple years ago, uh, the government uh, forced the casinos to have uh, 50% of their casino floor non-smoking, and uh, they went to a full ban, uh, effective, almost, uh, I should say an almost full ban, uh, effective uh, on Monday. And uh, the operators originally thought that premium mass was going to be excluded from the smoking ban as well as uh, VIP uh, as long as they were in uh, separate rooms. Uh, but uh, the government met with the operators late last week and uh, outlined the new plan, which would be that uh, premium mass uh, would have to adhere to the smoking ban as well, even if they were in a private room. So uh, what we learned is a lot of the infrastructure that was put into place um, to separate these areas is, was really wasted money. Um, and, you know, the, the other part of it is just that, you know, if, if we've seen in other markets that smoking bans have had a negative impact on gaming revenues, um, although I, I'll tell you, uh, every single operator we met with here does not think that there it will be a demand issue with the smoking ban. That is, the revenues will not be affected, but they are upset that, you know, the money they did spend was, uh, was really wasted, and had they known ahead of time, they wouldn't have gone ahead and uh, put that capital in. So I, I think the, the takeaway here, uh, if they're right, uh, then there's no impact. But, you know, that remains to be seen. And then it also remains to be seen how do we measure the impact uh, if there is an impact because the business is, uh, as we talked about, so volatile right now, it'll be hard to discern what is due to uh, the smoking ban and what's due to just the overall general weakness. Um, and so as you think about the market, you know, which operator is most exposed to the mass segment and the potential you know, further erosion in, in mass, the mass slowdown, and, and margin compression? Yeah, that's a good question. Now, um, there's different aspects to it, right? So the, 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 the overall takeaway on the mass side is that uh, premium mass, uh, that is the higher end segment, has decelerated faster than the regular grind, as we call it, mass business. Um, so while LVS has the most exposure overall to the mass business of so the companies that we cover, um, closely, uh, they have less uh, on the premium mass side, uh, whereas MPEL uh, has uh, a lot of mass exposure and VIP exposure, but they're very, very concentrated in the premium mass and overall probably more susceptible uh, to the, uh, you know, the, the further deceleration and even the, the margin issue uh, that we're, uh, we're projecting for later this year and into 2015. On the other hand, a company like Galaxy Entertainment, which is really the only stock in there that um, you know we would even look at on the long side. I don't know if it's a, you know a, a great buy right here, given that we think numbers need to come over, come down generally. Galaxy actually has a lot of exposure to VIP, but uh, they do a great job with VIP, so their business is is, uh, is actually doing quite well on a year-over-year basis, certainly relative to everybody else on the VIP side. So uh, a little bit of mixed bag um, on there. I think overall with the stocks, you know, we've had a, a big drawdown in, in market caps in, in all of these names, and the worst is probably behind us. But I think at best these stocks are, are probably generally dead money, given that there are no new catalysts, no positive catalysts coming up. Um, and, again, when numbers are going down, it's, it's hard for, for the stocks to, uh, to move higher. Todd, thank you for your comments. Safe travels back to the United States. I'm David Benz. For more information, please follow us on Twitter at Hedgeye Snake Eye.